Replica bones are made for everything from movie and Halloween props to medical models and taxidermy. Today, I'll be molding and casting a real animal femur bone. We're going to do something a little different by showing the same part cast with two different methods, a one-piece cup mold and a two-part silicone mold with built-in registration keys. Get ready as BJB continues to take the mystery out of materials. First, I'll make a simple cut mold. A cut mold is a mold that is cast in one piece that is then cut to remove the part. It is important to look at the geometry of the bone to determine the best location to place the pore spout and vent. It is important to note that because the bone is naturally porous, it has been waxed to prevent material from seeping in and locking to the bone. Using a small amount of CA glue, adhere the vent to one high point and the pore spout to the other. Determine how deep you'd like your bone to float in your cut mold and adhere the pore spout and vent to a stick using hot glue. Assemble your mold box using hot glue. Today, I'm using clear acrylic. Position your bone in the center of the mold box and attach it with hot glue. Mix, degas, and pour in TC5120 translucent platinum silicone. Allow to fully cure, remove your mold box, pore spout, and vent. The translucency of TC5120 allows you to easily see your part during the cutting process. Use reverse pliers to help you open the mold as you cut and be careful when cutting your mold so you don't nick your part. After cutting, spray the mold with rocket release and reassemble your mold box around the cut mold with tape. Create a pore spout with a mylar sheet and insert a straw into the vent hole. I'm using BJB's TC804 Rigid White Urethane. It features a one-to-one -one mix ratio, has a low viscosity that doesn't require degassing, and has a seven minute working time. I added in a drop of yellow oxide pigment to achieve a more realistic bone color. This method created a very nice cast and left very little flashing. It is important to note that while this method is easy and fast, using a low durometer silicone combined with the constant pulling and tugging that has to be done to remove the part makes the mold susceptible to tears which may reduce your mold life. Another molding method is to create a two-part silicone mold. Using a higher shore silicone will allow us to cast both resin and foam bones. First, you need to create a split line using plastilina clay. Be sure not to leave any gaps around your part so material does not seep under your bone. Place acrylic registration keys into the clay. Ensure your mold box is tight against the clay and place your pore spout and vent. Assemble your mold box with hot glue. Brush petroleum jelly into hard to reach areas and spray zip mold release into your mold box. Using TC5041 platinum silicone, mix, degas, and pour the first half of your silicone mold. Allow to fully cure and remove the mold box. Remove any silicone flashing and clean up the mold surface prior to reseeding the bone, pore spout, and vent into the first mold half. Reassemble the mold box using hot glue. Brush petroleum jelly into the hard to reach areas like the registration keys and spray with zip mold release. It is important to get good coverage of the mold release to ensure that the silicone does not stick to itself. Using TC5041 platinum silicone, mix, degas, and pour the second half of your silicone mold. Allow to fully cure and remove the mold box. The bone mold came out great. Now I'm ready to cast a rigid urethane bone. First, spray the mold with rocket release. 
Use pieces of the mold box and clamps to ensure a good seal between the two halves. Angle the mold and pour in the bone tinted TC804. Tapping and rotating the mold ensures that the material gets into all areas of the mold and helps to release any trapped air bubbles. After about 30 minutes, remove the clamps and wood and demold your bone. The bone looks great, almost no flashing. Using the same two-part mold, I will now cast rigid foam to create a lightweight bone. Mix equal parts of TC300 10-pound rigid foam and pour the foam into the mold. The slow rise of this foam allows you plenty of time to reassemble the mold. Using wood blocks, clamp the mold together. Rotate the mold to remove any large air bubbles. Angling the mold also helps channel air out, eliminating material voids. In about 30 minutes, you can demold your bone. This foam cures to a natural bone color, no pigment necessary. Just a little bit of flashing to clean up on the resin and foam bones, then we're ready for paint. Using an alcohol paint palette, I layer earth tone color washes with a sponge and use flecking with a chip brush to create a natural bone patina. To ensure that the paint job lasts, I also did a light coat of crystal clear to seal it. There is a significant weight difference between the original bone at 96.7 grams, the resin bone at 77.9 grams, and the rigid foam bone at only 21.3 grams. Using rigid foam reduced the weight of the original part by almost 80%. One bone with many ways to mold and cast it depending on your application. Cut molds are a simple way to quickly mold and cast parts. Unfortunately, cut molds often yield less casts because of the lower durometer silicone being used and the difficulty of removing parts from it. They also tend to create more flashing and cleanup work on the parts. If you're low on time and only need a few parts, this is a great method. If you need a production mold that will yield more castings and produce cleaner parts, a two-part silicone mold is worth the effort. Being able to use a higher durometer silicone allows you to run both foam and resin parts, maximizing the usability of the mold. Thanks for watching. You can find links to BJB products in the making of this video in the description. We have a wide variety of quality mold making and casting materials with technical help to choose the right product for your application. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to BJB's YouTube channel and social media. We have many beginner and advanced videos, as well as tech tips to help take the mystery out of materials.